The people leading the Vermont Bioenergy Initiative are forging the connection between diversified agriculture and renewable energy production. These farmers, scientists, and entrepreneurs are at the forefront of a local production for local use movement, and they are proving that local food systems and clean energy production together are economical, compatible, and essential. These are their stories. My name is Roger Rainville. My wife, Claire, and I bought uh, our farm in Alberg in 1983. Uh, it's a 235 acre farm. We milk dairy cows here up until about six years ago. And uh, then we decided to try to do some research work. So we work with uh, the University of Vermont Extension to do research work on crops and the Sustainable Jobs Fund doing some projects with growing oilseed, canola, and sunflowers. And making our own biodiesel last year, we were 100% self-sufficient on fuel. So we uh, ran all our equipment, all our diesel tractors on biodiesel, and we didn't buy any diesel fuel at all. So it was really gratifying to be able to do that and not be dependent on foreign oil or whatever you want. And uh, we're doing this for $1.71 a gallon. So that's the real exciting part of it. It's real economical also. Canola is a relatively easy crop to grow in the state of Vermont. It fits well into our growing season. It's meant to be grown in cooler climates. And so it fits well into our production scheme. There are two types of canola that, be, that can be grown in the Northeast. There's spring planted canola and there's winter canola. In, in terms of selecting varieties of spring or winter canola, you would want to so select a spring variety that is early to mid maturing. And for the winter type of canola, you would just want to make sure that you selected a variety with high winter survivability for the Northeast. The best way to determine the nutrient requirements for canola is to first take a soil test. Your soil test lab will be able to re recommend a proper amount of fertilizer for that crop. Canola performs best when planted into well-drained soils. Canola is not a crop that can withstand any wet or saturated soils. Spring canola will be planted in mid-April to early May, and winter canola should be planted in the end of August to early September. Canola can germinate under low soil temperatures. It germinates best under 40 degree temperatures. The average yield for spring canola is approximately 1,300 pounds per acre. The average yield for winter canola is 2,500 pounds of seed per acre. We try to grow a lot of our crops, not just the oil seed, but our other grains and uh, corns, silages and stuff, no-till, which means you don't till the soil like we tra traditionally do if you've been by a field and you see a farmer out there with a plow and he's turning the soil over. We've found out that that is not a good practice for the soil. because When we till the soil and we roll it over, uh, we're killing off all the microbes and everything that are in the soil that make it really, uh, make the soil really good to grow crops in. It makes it active. So we're doing this practice called no-till, which is a piece of equipment that we just drive on top of the ground and it's got discs that dig into the ground and just does a real limited amount of tillage and it plants the seed in the ground. It's not just that it's good for the soil, but it's also very economical because we're only going over the soil once. To do no-till, you're going to need to go in with some kind of herbicide unless you're growing a row crop and then you go in and cultivate, but we're not cultivating canola. We have to spray. Canola is planted with a grain drill, which means that it's planted in a standard row width of six to seven and a half inches. Canola is seeded very shallow at a quarter to a half inch depth, and it's seeded at a rate of five up to eight pounds of seed per acre. One of the most important agronomic practices that a farmer should implement to ensure success with growing canola is to make sure that the canola is planted on time. Late planted canola in the fall, generally it gets killed over the winter, and late planting canola in the spring leads to poor seed set, insect and pest pressures that the plant can't overcome. The last year, the field that we have canola in was into corn and canola cannot be grown year after year in the same field because of pressures from powdery mildew and other concerns we have with diseases that can kill the crops. We have many other things we grow so we can put other things in that rotation, particularly grass and corn. And sunflower plays another role in that rotation. So about every five years you're going to be back in there growing an oil seed. 
It's often difficult to know when to harvest canola. A lot of people want to wait until the plant is completely brown and crunchy. And the thing about canola is that it has a lot of little pods on it. And when these are extremely dry um, and you touch them, they can burst open and the seed will fly out. It's a dispersal mechanism that the plant has. Ideally, you want the seeds inside to be black. That's when they're ripe and ready to be harvested. And you want most of the plant to be dried down, 70, 80% of the plant brown. A farmer needs to understand that the canola will be harvested when some of the pods are still green instead of when they're all brown. There's different ways of harvesting. One is mowing it down, let it dry, and let it harvest there, or direct harvest when the crop is still standing. We prefer to do it when it's still standing. The windows are fairly small for harvesting, so you have to really be paying attention to that aspect of it. So we use a combine to harvest the canola. Uh, basically what it is is just a machine with a cutter bar on the bottom that cuts the crop, then there's a reel that pulls the crop into it. It pulls it up into a mechanism that has drums and teeth that thrash it, it's called a thrasher, and then there's screens that shake and they separate the seed, the canola from the weeds, and then the canola is put into a hopper where it's collected and then once the hopper's full, we empty it out and put it in the dryer. Most important thing we've seen about combining canola is that we need to carry a roll of duct tape with us. And it's kind of funny, but that's a fact because canola is such a small seed that if there's a little tiny hole somewhere, you lose a lot of seed in the field. So we do, that's our most important tool for harvesting canola and that holds tr true out west. When they do thousands of acres, everybody has big roll of duct tape in their combines so that they can plug little holes. Canola being such a small, fine seed, it's uh, really critical to get those adjustments proper. Follow the book and it tells you, you know, where to adjust stuff. Once we've finished uh, combining the canola, or while we're combining, we're transporting the canola back to a dryer. It's a big bin with a aerated floor, a whole floor with little holes in it, and uh, we're blowing air through it to get it dried to optimum uh, moisture conditions. We have a moisture meter that we test the canola while it's coming off the field. If our moistures are above 9%, we'll put it in this dryer and just air blowing through it and it'll dry it out and we run that dryer until the, the canola is around 9% moisture. That's ideal for getting the maximum amount of oil out when we're pressing it to make biodiesel. If we don't get that optimum dry down where we want, the canola is too wet as in any grain it'll start to heat and ferment. And that's the worst thing. You don't want that to start heating and fermenting. And usually above 12% is when most grains will start to heat and ferment. When the fall harvests are done, we'll go in this winter when our time is a little slower and uh, we'll start pressing the oil and getting prepared to make biodiesel.